Here he comes. <laughs> there you go. Let's hear it for Big Bill Reeser. Mr. Haney's here. <laughs> well, welcome to the greatest place to be where? On a Friday night. On a Friday night. I want to welcome everyone to Encounter. I want to welcome our online viewers, people watching all over the country, California, all over. Uh, there might be someone in the desert somewhere in Texas watching it somewhere. You just never know. Uh, but we want to welcome everyone watching. It's going to be a great night. Uh, our worship uh, team, the Yellow submarine band here is ready to lead us in worship and we're so excited for them. Uh, our lead singer uh, has gone through a transformation as you can see and uh, <laughs> Anthony was supposed to be here. He's sick and we, we, Lord we just pray for Anthony. Yeah. He's in a lot of pain and we love Anthony. He's, he's just a great man of God and we just pray for your hand upon him, your angels to be around him and we pray for a miracle touch from heaven for your blood to do battle for him. And we thank you that, uh, for these servants here that have stepped up uh, at the last second, rearranged things, and they're going to sing and worship to the glory of God. And we pray for your anointing to come down over them as we, as we worship to an audience of one. And it's because it's all about you, Lord, tonight. And uh, we love you, Lord. Thank you for loving us first. Thank you for loving us more. And thank you for blessing encounter tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen. A couple quick things before we enter into worship. Man, it does feel like a comedy club uh, sort of environment. With the, with the... <laughs> I know. I tried being a comedian, and it didn't work out. I went to the bank. They said, what do you do for a living? I'm a comedian. The guy couldn't stop laughing. Anyway, where's the drums on that? There you go. So I was supposed to have a couple announcements, and I took the wrong sheet up, but that's okay. Here's a couple quick things you need to know about. Uh, we're going to try and get to groups tonight. So we're going to try and end on time. Uh, and uh, another thing is, uh, we got two Encounter Bible studies running right now. We're going to launch some new ones in, uh, in the fall, September. So stay tuned for that. Also, we want to let you know there's a big men's retreat coming up at Green River uh, this year. And it's going to be amazing. I want all the guys... Who, probably going to work out something with, where we, we want to take a bunch of the Revive guys as well, too. Would you guys like to go to something like that? Uh, we'll work it out with leadership. But hopefully, don't, don't hold me to it, but I'm going to be working with the leadership, see if we can get you guys up there. It's going to be an amazing retreat in September. More information will be coming uh, along with that. But listen, everyone get up on your feet, please, if you're able. Uh, it's going to be an amazing night. We're going to be hitting on Anchor 5. Uh, we're going to get honest about our past, so our past is finally our past. Amen. 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 Worship team, that's all yours. Thank you. that fade are never enough then you came along and you put me back together and every desire is now satisfied here in your
nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. give the Lord the praise this evening. You know, as Bill was saying, it's kind of funny. Um, 5.30 today, we had no idea what we were going to sing. So, we just have to say the Lord is awesome. Can I have a hallelujah with that? The Lord is great. He's phenomenal. So, we just want to say, you know, uh, we appreciate y'all being here this evening. And just, just let the Lord just come in tonight. You know, because when we started this service, when we got up here, we... Like I say, we had no idea. All the songs we had, we had to change things around, and it was like, you know, it was stressful. But, you know, the Lord showed up. Amen. He shows up when you don't think he's going to show up. You know, we have fear. We have doubt. We have to sit here, and we got to say, oh, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? What does he tell us to do? He tells us to drop your knees and pray. So we prayed. And when we prayed, you know what? He showed up in a mighty way. So the Lord is here this evening. So we just want to say we want to raise a hallelujah to the Lord this evening. So. Absolutely. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah. Come on, I'm gonna sing 
In the middle of the storm Louder and louder You're gonna hear my praises roar Up from the ashes Hope will arise Death is defeated The King is alive Sing a little louder 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 of my enemy got a reckless love for us, does he not? The Lord just goes crazy for us whenever we love him back. It's just amazing. This evening, it's what you want to do. We want you to just feel the power of the Lord. The Holy Spirit come in and just give you his reckless love. Just take you over this evening. Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so kind to me. And oh, the overwhelming never
I was your foe, steal your love far from me. You have been so, so good to me. And I felt no worth, you paid it all. So, so kind to me Though the overwhelming Never-ending Reckless love of God Oh, it chases me down by still I found leaves to not deny I couldn't turn it I don't deserve it Still you yourself away Shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. No, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights it. yourself away Oh, the overwhelming never-ending reckless love of God Yeah, yeah. Oh Father, we just thank you so much that uh, your love is reckless. It's relentless. It's powerful. We can never fathom the full effect of it. We can never really grasp it, but we receive it by faith. When we get to heaven and see you face to face, even then it may be hard to grasp how wide, how deep, how relentless, how reckless your love really is and how far it really goes. And I pray that love which has already come down tonight through, his, through our worship team and through everyone here. We're open to love tonight. We're open to power tonight. We're open to change tonight. We're open to miracles tonight. We're open to be transformed and made into the image of Jesus tonight. And we're open for a fresh anointing tonight, straight from your throne room. So, Lord, get us out of the way. Fill us up with you so that we can be healed, changed, transformed, so that we can be walking, talking, 
miniature Jesuses running around telling people the good news of salvation and freedom. And I just pray that tonight you would teach us how to let go of the baggage. Yeah. You would teach us how to let go of regrets, shame, guilt. Those, place, those things have no place in our lives. You didn't wire us to walk around with those things. So I pray that you set us free from each and every one of those things tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And amen. All right. All right. Everyone excited? Everyone ready? Okay. I usually have my podium, uh, but it's going to be good. Man, it's dark out here. It's a good night to pick a pocket. There we go. Where are my friends Jody and Barb from Rockford? Are they back there? I've got some, some of my best friends in the entire world were part of our ministry when I got hired to work in a church in Rockford, Illinois. They were there from the beginning, the entire time. Some of our dearest friends, they drove down to be with us tonight. Say hello to Jody and Barb. Thank you. We love you guys. Well, Anchor 5, it's our summer series, uh, reviewing the anchors real quick. Anchor 5, let's put it up there on the screen. Get honest about my past so I can discover God's best version of me. Honesty, actually Jody said it out in the lobby, is the first word. Honesty is the first word I want you thinking about before you start this reflective yet healing journey, discovering how you became the person you are today so you can become God's best version of you tomorrow. Anyone want to become God's best version of yourself? Well, look what David wrote in Psalm 32 too. Yes, what joy for those whose record the Lord has cleared of guilt, whose lives are lived in complete honesty. You know, there's nothing like a phony. Can't stand phonies. And it's good to be open. You know, I lived that way for a long, long time. And when Jesus Christ came into my life, it was so refreshing to be honest. This is who I am. That's it. Take it. It's never going to change. The only change that's going to take place is how God transforms me each and every day to be more like Jesus each and every day. But I want to tell you today that if you're not able to say with conviction, the Lord has cleared my record of guilt, you know what? You're still carrying that guilt. And so I had a lot of guilt and shame. The Lord has cleared my record. Not guilty. Shame is gone. Regrets are gone. See, guilt will lead you down a sixth cycle of denial. You know what that is, doing the same thing over and over again. I just want to tell you tonight, maybe it's time to do something different. You ever thought about that? Just do something different. Maybe it's time to do something opposite of what you think you should do. Maybe it's time to have a moment like the disciple George Costanza from Seinfeld. Remember that episode when he decides that he's going to do the opposite? I don't know if you remember, he said everything in his, everything in his life has gone wrong. And the episode starts with George making the statement. He says, my life has been the complete opposite of everything I wanted it to be. And George walks into a diner and Jerry tells him, he and tells Jerry, I should do the opposite of whatever I think I'm supposed to do. And Jerry re responds, if every instinct you have is wrong, then the opposite would have to be right. You see, insanity, as you know, say this a lot, is doing the same things over and over again expecting a different result. And I want to tell you today that to experience something great and miraculous in your life, you're going to have to do something which is the opposite of what you'd normally do. You have to do something opposite of what your natural instincts are, opposite of what your old nature, your old sin nature, your old self wants you to do, what you have been programmed to do for so many years. What you're so used to doing as far as coping and dealing with all the events in your life, especially when trouble comes and you get sort of triggered and you go back to your old ways of coping, you're just going to have to do something opposite of that. Now, when I talk about doing the opposite, I'm talking about doing something so countercultural, so opposite of what society and even what most churches are selling these days. 
Some of those opposite choices include living out these 12 anchors of hope. These are important to live out these 12 anchors of hope. Praying with complete honesty and surrender. How's your prayer life? You know why people don't pray? Because they don't want to get honest with God. They don't want to get gut level honest with God. Radically trusting God in every area of your life. Giving him access to every area of your life. Not just 90% of it. Not just 99% of it. I'm talking about allowing the Holy Spirit to have access to your life. And then allowing the Holy Spirit to guide you in truth. So you can see through the lens of God. How you became the person you are today. And then get on a track of how to be transformed into the person God wants you to be. Allowing the Holy Spirit to take all the trash that has been piling up in your life for all these years, that has never been thrown out because of your emotional hoarding of past hurts. You see, I know what I'm talking about because I had a lot of trash. I mean, just a ton of trash. I started packing away as a kid from when my dad left, growing up in New York City, abuse, all you, you name it, I went through it. And my trash was a never-ending buildup of unforgiveness in my heart that wreaked a vile stench that affected other people in my life. My garbage of bitterness and unforgiveness was fueled by shame and guilt that paralyzed me. And because it paralyzed me, it, it hurt others around me. I mean, the largest company in the world is waste management. They weren't big enough to take the trash out of my life. The CEO of the greatest recycling corporation in the universe was the person I contacted to take the trash out of my life. His name is Jesus Christ. And he's the great recycler of trash, of pain, of hurts, of resentments, of sin, character defects, pain, shame, guilt, regrets, strongholds, whatever it is, he can get rid of it just like that. See, a lot of times when, we, when we're carrying around this stuff, we love to blame a lot of things out there. I did that. I blamed the whole world but me. I blamed everyone but me because I never wanted to take personal responsibility for my own life. But the truth is, the things that keep us stuck most of the time are not external, it's not other people, it's internal. The things that hold you back for most of the things in your life is inside you. And when it comes to the trash that's been piling up in your life, that's been building up for years, for that type of trash, you're gonna need a special pickup to make sure you get rid of it. Otherwise, you're stuck with it the rest of your life. Because when, sometimes when you have a lot of trash, you've got to call for a special pickup. You're going to have to do an encounter study. You're going to have to really hear the voice of God. That's what an encounter study does. It puts you in a position where you can hear the voice of God. You can actually hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. And he will reveal and rip out the root issues of your life. And until you get honest about your life, do the opposite of what you've been normally doing and get serious about letting the Holy Spirit reveal and take out your trash, you're always going to go back to your trash. You're always going to go back to that, that bin and look inside of it. See if you can pick something up. And if you don't learn and heal from your regrets, you'll regress instead of making progress. You always do. So what's the one answer that can fix all of this in my life? What's the one answer? The Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit's always the answer. He can fix all of this by taking you on a journey where he will reveal to you every event in your life that shaped you into the person you are today. And while he's doing that, he's going to reveal not just the symptoms, but the root issues of your life that need ripping out and healing once and for all so that you can be free. Anybody walking free these days? I mean, come on, this is what, I mean, Christ died so we can be free. And when you evaluate your past, I know it can be painful, 
with the Holy Spirit's help and guidance, look at all the events and the people that impacted your life and how fears were started to build up in your life, how character defects, insecurities, coping mechanisms, survival mechanisms all started to develop, how doubts were developed, how pain was developed, how habits were developed. You can, if you get all that out on the table with the Holy Spirit's help, God will heal you. God will set you free from it. He won't take you through that journey again just to make you relive the pain again. He wants to heal you once and for all. Now listen, the fifth anchor of hope, again, is about getting gut level honest with yourself and with God. At some point, you got to do that. But you need a couple of things. Anchor 5 requires a couple of things that you've got to get, have established before you go on this journey. You can't just go on this journey. First, you've got to have the right mindset. You always hear me talking about mindsets. So you've got to recognize and agree with God on the thoughts He wants me to dwell on. You've got to set your mind on things in heaven. You see, a lot of times we forget. You know, I've had two funerals in the past seven days. A lot of times we forget, this is not our home. We don't live here. It's a temporary spot. It's a temporary resting place for us. It's a te- we're, listen, we're just strangers in a foreign land. We are kingdom representatives operating under kingdom authority for a kingdom much better than this planet Earth. Amen. We're children of the king. We have to fix our thoughts and our mind on kingdom thinking and a kingdom way of living. So you got to have the right mindset. You can't just be consumed with what's going on down here. Second, you got to have the right attitude. Attitude's so important. You got to humbly allow God to evaluate your thoughts and guide your actions by completely surrendering to Him and His Word. Are you completely surrendered to God and His Word? Because if you're not, this journey will end quick, or you'll bail. This is where people just run. When when people do an encounter study, and they fast forward and look at this lesson, they'll sign up, they'll show up the first week, and they'll look at Anchor 5, and you'll never see them again. They don't show up, because they they peeked ahead. And they said, I'm going to get honest, I ain't getting honest with anybody. That's just me. This is between me and my family. That's it. We don't talk about family stuff with no one. And they just run. And you never see them again. Well, they may pop in here. That's right. I'm talking to you. But you won't do that in counter study because you don't want to get gut level honest with God. You got to have the right attitude. Second, you got to have the right. Third, you got to have the right motive. What's the right motive? Well, I'm going to do this. So she'll like me. No. You're going to do this because you love God back. Because Jesus loves you so much and he's done so much for you. That's why we talk a lot about the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. You've got to have a desire to love God back from a place of gratitude in response to his great love for you. Next, you've got to have the right spirit of honesty. You've got to allow the Holy Spirit to search you as you get gut level honest and real with God. Are you ready to do that? Come on, it's, it's, it's so liberating. To have the Holy Spirit search you. So good. And then five, this is important. You got to have the right relationships. If you're running around in bad relationships, this ain't going to work. When we do the Holy Spirit series, one of the things that we do, which sort of surprises people, is we ask three questions. Do you have a relationship with the Father? Do you have a relationship with the Son? And do you have a relationship with the Holy Spirit? It's three, but one, but separate. See, the Father's with Jesus. Jesus is with the Father. And Jesus says, it's better for you that I go. Unless I go, the helper won't come. Jesus ain't here. He's with the Father in heaven. But the Holy Spirit's here. Yet he's the most misunderstood and most denied person of the Trinity. And for most people, he's the third wheel as opposed to the third person of the Trinity. Do you have a relationship with the Holy Spirit? Do you have a relationship with the Father? Do you have a relationship with the Son? Are all your relationships honoring to God? Are you honoring God with your body? 
with your sex life? Are you honoring God with grace and forgiveness? Are you closing your accounts with other people? Or are you holding on to bitterness? This is important. You got to have the right relationships. So now that you're aware that you got to have the right mindset, attitude, motive, the right spirit of complete honesty, the right relationships, it's so important for you to go back. If you're in the study right now, many of you are in the study, and I want to say way to go for being in the study. Uh, you got to go back because anchors one, anchors two, anchors three, and anchors four all establish this type of get you in position so that you can have this encounter with the Holy Spirit where you can go on this journey. So if you have an applied anchor, and most people never get out of anchor one, make the decision to get well from my problems and brokenness and realize I do a terrible job at playing God. Most of us never get out of the garden where we get duped into the four lies of the enemy. Did God really say, I won't kill you. You can, know, you can continue doing that. You can know right from wrong. You can have your own moral code. Did God really say, it won't kill you. You could be just like God. And you can know right from wrong. In other words, you can have your own moral code. Most of us are still believing those lies. And when we believe those lies and don't allow God to take complete control of our lives, we play God. And we, may, and we never make the decision to get well. We're like the guy at the pool who was an invalid for 38 years. And then anchor two, you got believe that God's love and power can restore hope and healing. It's a matter of faith. It's, it's with faith. It, listen, this is the life where it's impossible to please God without faith. I said this last night. I say this all the time. You probably heard me say it a hundred times. If you want to be a God pleaser, you have to live by faith. Most people think that at the end of their lives, they're going to be judged by what they did or didn't do, but you're going to be judged by what you believed or didn't believe because what you believed or didn't believe determined what you did or didn't do. And at the end of our lives, I want to go in strong. I want to go in like my brother Lee Corman. I want to go in, I want to go in and hear, well done, good and faithful. If you want to be called a faithful servant, you have to live the life of faith. You know what living the life of faith is? It means you trust God no matter what. You believe God no matter what. You trust God's word no matter what. And you do God's word no matter what. You live out God's word no matter what. And then the third anchor is surrendering my life and will. It's not just becoming a Christian, but it's understanding the finished work of Jesus Christ. And most Christians will try and do something that was already accomplished on the cross when Jesus yelled out to Telestai, it is finished and paid in full. And what you're trying to do is run around taking care of your, your shame and your guilt and your regrets when Jesus said, not guilty, paid in full. Because we don't understand what he's done for us on the cross. And if you don't understand the finished work of what Jesus did for you on the cross, then you'll live a legalistic life of works based on self, not fueled by the Holy Spirit. Because if you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you're operating in grace and gratitude for what he's done for you on that cross because you know what he's finished and you'll never try and accomplish what he's finished. And you'll rest in what he's done. You see, it's not what you do to get you into heaven. It's what he's done that gets you into heaven. Does this make sense? Okay, and then the fourth is you got to realize who you are. You got to realize your identity in Christ. You're a child of the king. How great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called a child of the king. You don't have to spend an entire lifetime trying to become somebody you already are. You are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. You are a king's kid. You have power. You have authority. The same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead lives inside of you. That's who you are. You're accepted, secure, significant. Who can stop you? And now you have the Holy One of Israel, the power of the Holy Spirit that doesn't not just come upon you, he lives inside of you. And you're walking around with your heads down. You're never going to find God with your head down. Lift your head up. 
I'm actually happy tonight. Can you tell? Anchors 5 to 12 don't work unless you establish that walk and apply those first four anchors to your, to your life. Proverbs 5.21 says this. This is where we're going to get gut level honest with God. I'm going to share some scriptures with you that are going to help you do that. Uh, 521 says, for your ways, look at it up on the screen, for your ways are in full view of the Lord, and he examines all your paths. Think about that. It's like, I'll do this, maybe God won't notice. <laughs> That's hysterical. Psalm 130, 3 through 4. Ask God to remind you of just how much you've been forgiven by him. This is important because a lot of people get loaded they, down with, with, with guilt because they don't remind themselves how good and gracious and what a, what a compassionate, forgiving God we serve. It says this, Lord, if you kept the record of our sins, who, O Lord, could ever survive? But you offer forgiveness that we might learn to fear you. Wow. Isn't that a great... Isaiah 43, 25 to 26, it says this, I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake and remembers your sins no more. How many, who needed to hear that tonight? He remembers your sins no more. Wow, that's powerful right there. Review the past for me, he says. Come on, review the past for me. Let's argue the matter together and state the case for your innocence. God says, come on, let's talk about it. Let's have this conversation. I want to put you in a position where you could hear the voice of God. Hebrews 4, 12 through 13 says this, and you've got to ask God to search every part of you through his word and the Holy Spirit. It says, for whatever God says to us is full of living power. Everyone say living power. It is sharper than the sharpest dagger cutting swift and deep into our innermost thoughts and desires with all their heart, with all their parts, exposing us for what we really are. And I love this. He knows about everyone everywhere. Everything about us is bare and wide open to the all-seeing eyes of our loving God. Nothing can be hidden from him to whom we, we must explain all we have done. See, you're going to have to explain your life. It's better to explain it now and receive his forgiveness than wait to heaven and try and explain it and try and change his mind, which most people think they're going to try and change God's mind. That's seriously, the average person thinks they're going to get to heaven and change God's mind about his holiness, about heaven, about hell, about salvation, about repentance. Psalm 139 I'm actually doing a wedding for a dear, dear friend in California this weekend. And I'm opening up the wedding, sharing Psalm 139, verse 1 through 18. Because it's one of the most intimate love letters that God has given to us, a Psalm of David. It's so intimate. I don't have it up on the screen. Uh, but I want you to read it tonight. Because if you don't encourage yourself... When you go on a journey, because a journey like this can be really hard at times, because it, it'll sometimes lead you, and you, you'll lead yourself, actually, into only thinking about the bad stuff. But God wants you to think about the good stuff, too. And God wants you to, to, to not only focus, God wants you to focus on His love for you. So I don't know about you, but I read Psalm 139, verses 1 through 18, at least three, four times a week to remind myself how intimate God's thoughts are towards me. I have to remind myself all the time. And so the page is about to come off. That's why I don't want to open it up. I think the page is going to come off. And then when you get to verse 23 and 24, it says this. We're going to, I got to move because we're going to run out of time. It says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting light. Did you catch the four things? It says, search me and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along your path. S-T-P-L. If you allow the Holy Spirit to search, test, point, and lead, 
you, then Anchor 5 can bring you to a place where God will heal you once and for all. God will take every ounce of pain, shame, guilt, fear that you've experienced up, up to this point in your life, and he'll make you a redeemed masterpiece of his grace. That's what he does. Anybody want that? Anybody need that? You can't change your past, but you can be free from your past. Doesn't have to hold you hostage any longer. See, when I gave my life to Christ, I had the social skills of a teenager because I never grew beyond my pain and my hurts. My confusion and hurt grew into shame that grew into anger. To cope with that anger, I began drinking excessively and using drugs. I started having inappropriate sexual relationships with women when I was a very young teenager as a way to numb my pain. I grew up without the physical touch of a father, and when I became old enough to see that other people had fathers, I wondered why my own hadn't loved me enough to stick around. I acted out in ways that were hurtful to me and hurtful to others. I didn't realize I had deep abandonment issues, an absent father wound, a boatload of generational curses handed down to me from my family. My life was a train wreck. I was a total disaster. And when I eventually surrendered my life to Jesus, I knew I had to go all in. I, I just did to allow God to change me and transform my stinking way of thinking and acting. And by applying Anchor 5 to my life, I was able to, as my wife says, because my wife is a connecting dots type of person. It has to make sense for her. She has to connect the dots. That's so important. And so I was able to connect the dots in my life where people and events in my life contributed to the person I had become. As I prayed and allowed the Holy Spirit to search my heart and reveal things to me, I started writing. What did I start writing? This is what I started writing. I, write, I wrote down who had done things to me. Every single person had done something in my life. Good, bad, and the ugly. A lot of good, a lot of bad, a lot of evil, a lot of vile. I wrote down specifically what they did to me. I wrote down exactly how it made me feel. I wrote down exactly how I responded. I wrote down how I coped with those feelings, with that pain, as a result of those events. And then I started listing all the character defects, and they were many, too many to count, that developed in my life and certain behaviors in my life that I exhibited as a result of what people did to me or how an event in my life impacted me. Then, it wasn't until then that I could clearly see how I became the person that I was. And doing this spiritual exercise, I got to tell you, Help me understand what the root issues were in my life and how those root issues needed to be rooted out by the power of the Holy Spirit. And when God ripped out my root issues by healing them, I saw God in a different light. I saw people in a different light. I walked around lighter. I didn't have the heaviness. I didn't have the burden anymore. I was free. It really was God's best version of me. It was God's best plan for me. It was best identity for me. It was God's best destiny for me. That's why I do what I do. I want you to be free. There's nothing like walking free. Did I want to look back at my past and think about and reliving those painful memories again? No. But I knew that God was with me. And if God is with you, it doesn't matter what he takes you through. Just ask someone who's grieving. It's not pleasant, but if God is with you, it can still be a beautiful thing to know the arms of a Savior, to know the, the comfort of a Father, arms never too short to reach down and comfort us. Sometimes those arms will come and actually hug you. They've done for me. I have felt the physical touch of my Father in heaven. Before. 
You see, before I trusted in Jesus Christ, I gave those hurts unhealthy power in my life. And I lived it as if those hurts belonged there. It was like a blanket, security blanket that you carry around. I love being the victim. I love playing the victim card. I love the attention I got as a, as a result of my whining. I was a whiner. Forget about Saturday Night Live, the whiners. I invented the whiners. I don't like that recipe. I was a whiner. I developed habits, and I'd allowed those hurts to influence my bad behaviors. But when I decided to follow Jesus, you know, it's as simple as I didn't want to live that way anymore. I didn't want to be a whiner. I didn't want to, I didn't want to blame everyone. This finally, it was time in my life to start taking a look at Bill Reeser and take personal responsibility for my own life. My unresolved hurts had grown inside of me for so long. It's for, for years I believed the lie that my pain would never go away. I would always be like that. I had denied that the people and events in my life had any effect on me. My efforts to deal with guilt and shame and regrets phew, was a disaster. I learned the hard way that no one is qualified to deal with guilt. Jesus Christ is the only one. Therapy can't fix it. Counseling can't fix it. A mentor can't fix it. There's only one thing that can fix it. God's grace. That's it. That's it. But I allowed all those symptoms to dominate my life. But they weren't my root issues. See, a lot of us major in the minors when you only deal with the symptoms and never really get gut level honest about your root issues. This is so important. You see, my root issues, the abandonment of a father, the trauma of sexual assault, the disappointment of losing my dreams, of becoming an NBA star, those are my root issues that it caused me to use those things to cope with my pain, to numb myself in unhealthy and dysfunctional ways. But when I got serious again, when Jesus Christ came into my life, it was just an open, honest relationship. We put it all out on the table. God revealed to me all my root issues. And when the Holy Spirit cleaned me up, cleaned me out, revealed everything, he illuminated what was once darkness and brought it into his marvelous light. And it set me free. See, the devil had convinced me that I wasn't worthy of, worthy of God's love, and that I should live in guilt, shame, and regrets. And he's a master at doing that with Christians. Even, I know I've been forgiven, but I just need to hold on to this guilt and shame, because if I don't hold on to it, it something's going to happen. We do it all the time. The devil had convinced me that I wasn't worthy of God's love, and I should live with those things. See, guilt told me I always did the wrong thing. Shame convinced me I was the wrong thing. Guilt held me hostage to my actions. Shame held me hostage to a false identity. No more. Before Christ, the devil convinced me I was unlovable and unredeemable. But God exposed those lies and declared me not guilty. I learned that God's plan for me included a better version of me than the one the devil had led me to believe. John 10.10 10 says, The thief only comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that they may have life and life to the full. Worship team, you can come on up, please. My story began with the fact that my earthly father abandoned me. It ends with the truth that my heavenly father never left me. The finished work of Christ on the cross declares me a son of the one true king. His arms were open wide to forgive me, receive me when I turn from my sins and I turn to him. My story, no longer a Bill Reeser testimony. It's his story. I no longer live in the past. You know why? Christ made my past my past. I will forever live in gratitude and praise to the God who saved me. Guess what? Not from the world, not from the devil. He saved me from me. 
God doesn't want you living with unresolved hurts from your past. He wants to restore what the enemy has stolen. You know what tonight's about? It's about taking back ground that the enemy has stolen from your life. God wants to replace your regrets with a hope for the future. Listen, here's how he does it. He exchanges your guilt with his grace, your sin with his forgiveness, your hate with his love, your pain for his power, your hurts for his healing, your identity for his identity, your old nature for his new nature, your shame with his son, and your life for his. It's really that simple. If anyone wants to be part of that great exchange program where Jesus Christ exchanges everything that he has and adds it to your account so that you can be free, tonight you can receive the great exchange program and be set free and finally make your past your past. Everyone stand up. If you've never accepted this type of love, it all starts with a relationship with Jesus Christ. You say, Bill, I hear you. I'm weighed down with my guilt. I'm weighed down with regrets and shame. I've got sins too many to, to tell. They're killing me. I'm ready to surrender it all to Jesus. I'm ready to be transformed. I don't want to live like this anymore. If that's you, would you just have the courage to say, I want a new life. I want to be transformed. Amen. 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 Well, just pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I've just messed up everything in my life. My sins are too many to count, and they're weighing me down. I've got guilt, I've got shame and regrets. And I turn from all of them. I repent of it all. And I turn to you and trust you and you alone. Forgive me. Clear the slate. Take my sins and never remember them ever again, just like you say in your word. Thank you for doing that. I confess that you are the Christ, the living God, my Savior. And I say this with my mouth, but I really believe it in my heart. Thank you for saving me today and declaring me not guilty. Amen. Amen. Now let's worship. Come forward. If you need people to pray for you, my prayer team will be ready. Let's just close out. Bye. 
lion and the lamb, the lion and the lamb. How great is our God? Sing with me. How great is our God? And all will see how great, how great is our God. tell you, uh, first of all, honesty. This is what it all takes. Gut level honesty. Gut level honesty. So you can hear the voice of God. That's what it takes. A lot of people, I know Christians who spend entire lifetimes and they come to me all the time. I have never heard from God. I can't hear the voice of God. This 